you are coming from a classical background, you may be familiar with the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is one of the most common ways to learn key signatures, and it is prevalent in common practice theory curriculum. Now, in jazz, because of course we have to do things a little differently, we use the circle of fourths. Okay, but why? So, many common jazz and pop chord progressions follow the root movement within the circle of fourths. We will be using the circle to practice chords and concepts to develop flexibility and the jazz vernacular. Whenever I refer to the name the circle, assume that means the circle of fourths. Okay, the basic building block of chords within jazz are seventh chords. Now, if you're a little rusty on your major, minor, diminished, and augmented triads in all keys, pause this video right now, click on the triad review video attached to the lesson. When you are solid on your triads, resume this video. We are gonna start out our chord work with seventh chords. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, AKA half diminished, diminished seventh, minor major seventh. Each type of seventh chord has a shorthand symbol, and here they are. So I'm gonna use C as the root of each of these chords, just for demonstration. C major seven can be written a few ways. C, M, A, J, seven, C, M, A, seven, C, triangle seven. Now the triangle is shorthand and old school, but if people are handwriting charts, they often use this triangle. Next is the dominant seven. In classical theory, it can be called several things. Sometimes it's called a major minor seven, meaning a major triad with a minor third on top, which yeah, that's technically what it's made of, but it's very obtuse to the jazz language. So I do not recommend ever using this lingo in a jazz setting. You'll get some super strange looks. Another dominant symbol you might be familiar with from classical theory is C little x seven. If you use this symbol, file that away in your classical brain, unless you wanna get some more weird looks from the jazzers. So that's kind of what not to do, but what can you use? This is actually a really simple chord symbol. C, seven, the end. Minor sevens are minor triads with a minor third on top. The old school shorthand way is C minus seven. And you'll also see it written as C M I seven or C M I N seven. Next in line is the minor seven flat five. Now it's totally a mouthful, but it describes just exactly what it is. Notation for this chord symbol is either a C minus seven, little b five, which is the shorthand way, or C M I seven flat five. This chord is actually a double agent because it's also known by the name half diminished. The reason for this is because the base of the chord is a diminished triad followed by a major third on top. So half of it is diminished and half of it isn't. The shorthand for this symbol looks like the planet Saturn tilted on its side or a degree sign with a slash through it. I find that handwritten notation is more apt to have these symbols than printed music is. You'll most likely see these chords, at least in current materials, written as minor seven flat five instead of this symbol. Next, we have the fully diminished seventh chord. This is a symmetrical chord, and each note is separated by a minor third. The symbol for this chord has two options, C, D, I, M, seven, or C with the degree sign seven. Again, like the half diminished chord with the slash degree sign, the C fully diminished chord with the degree sign will most likely be seen in handwritten or more old school notation. So 90% of the time prepare to see C, D, I, M, seven. The last chord is not as common, but is a super cool seventh chord. And this is a minor major seventh. This is made with a minor triad on the bottom and a major third on top. So there's no easy and short way to write this symbol. It takes up a lot of space on the page, but it's either printed C M I M A J seven or C minus sign triangle seven. It's a lot. And now let's get into your exercises. So here's how we're going to put these chords to work. Your first assignment is to play each of these chords in root position around the circle. Now remember the circle of fourths is what we're going to use, not fifths. So start with major sevenths, play all in root position around the circle. Next, play all the dominant sevenths around the circle, root position. Minor sevenths around the circle, root position. Minor seven flat five or half diminished, same thing, around the circle. Fully diminished seventh around the circle. And minor major seventh around the circle. Before you get started on this, I want to warn you, a lot of these concepts are very logical and simple to understand intellectually. 
It seems like a neat and tidy list, and it is, but remember your brain is going to be working hard on building those new neural pathways and your fingers and your body will need time to catch up. So you might have a bit of a disconnect with your intellectual understanding at first and what your body is able to do. So if you find your progress is not as simple and straightforward as you think, just remember that and it's totally normal. Playing in all 12 keys will bring different shapes to your hands. So be mindful that your brain is mapping out information. I suggest taking one group of seventh chords at a time, playing through them in order, then assessing and seeing if you need to break it down. One thing I like to do is break down the circle. Try concepts in C, F, B flat, and E flat. And get those solid before moving on to the next four. And then finally, third group of four keys. After you spend time in all those keys, play all 12 in order with the metronome and see if you can move throughout the keys without hesitation. If you are hesitating between a few tricky chords, isolate that chord as well as the chord before it so your brain and your hands can practice the movement. Because these chords are basic foundations in jazz, you won't be able to get much out of the following lessons unless you are fluent with these seventh chords. If you already have a good understanding and application of these chords in root position, as a bonus exercise, test out your skills by playing each chord in first inversion and then going around the circle. After that, second inversion, go around the circle. And finally, third inversion and going around the circle. This will create even more flexibility within your playing. However, if seventh chords in root position are where it's at for you right now, that is totally fine and you will still be able to be successful in the following lessons. Here's a quick example of me playing major sevenths around the circle with the track you also have. Notice that instead of continually jumping up the keyboard by fourths, the movement of chords is more of a zigzag motion. C up to F, down to B flat, up to E flat, down to A flat, up to D flat, etc. Next, start on a root position C major 7 chord, and when moving to F major 7, invert that to second inversion. Continue with this pattern. You'll notice that every time you move, you'll have two notes in common between chords. For the final exercise, start on C major 7, second inversion, then move to F major 7 in root position. Continue with this pattern around the circle of fourths. After you've completed these exercises with major seventh chords, do these same exercises with all the other types of seventh chords. Have fun with this exercise. And again, remember those concepts are simple, but your brain and your fingers need to be on board too. You totally got this. Good luck and I will see you in the next lesson.